Blog Talk Radio. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. This is the 90 Degree Show brought to you by the Marching Podcast and Blog Talk Radio. I'm your official Marching Podcast announcer, David Thompson, and here's your host, the Phantom Podcaster himself, Joe Beard. All right, good evening and welcome to the 90 Degree Show. I am your host, Joe Beard, and happy to be of service for you tonight. Today is May 19th, 2013, 5 o'clock on the West Coast and 8 o'clock on the East Coast. One year ago today, I broadcast the first show of the Marching Podcast Network here on Blog Talk Radio, and I am happy to say that I'm here one year later and plans to be here many more years to come. So tonight, thank you for listening, and if you have listened to any shows in the past, we thank you very much. At the end of the broadcast, if you decide you like the show, then we appreciate a donation uh, to the network, if you feel so in your heart, of course. Just go simply go to the marchingpodcast.com and click on the donate button to improve the show and to build our scholarship fund. So today, before I start any more, I just want to say prayers uh, and thoughts and energies to my family. Uh, My grandmother passed this morning, and I appreciate all the thoughts and concerns from everyone. Uh, She's in a much better place now, so I feel uh, really, really good about where she is. Um, But just wanted to say that because it just happened uh, today. So especially thinking about you, Dad, today. Um, so, um, this will definitely be for you and for our family. Um, again, this is a celebration. So again, thoughts and prayers out to my family and, you know, it looks like I'll be in Mississippi pretty soon. So tonight for the one year anniversary, I will talk about the things we have achieved here at the Marching Podcast, our plans for the future of the network. I'll also tell the world my favorite experiences of the year and memorable moments for me in hosting this podcast. So you are free to call in and voice your opinion and talk as well at 718-664-6025. We would like to hear from you, the listener. If you have any favorite moments of the show or things that you would like uh, that you learned from the show or if you would like to put a note in the suggestion box for something that you would like to see or hear, or something that you would like to change, just let us know. We have a celebrity list of people to call in today. Uh, I know Rashad Waters will be here, and I believe that uh, Troy Troy Milton, my crab brother, I think that he's on the line. I'm sure that's 313. Uh, we'll have some other people call in as well today. Um, but, <clears throat> again, we'll be talking about the upcoming marching season with them and what they're looking for. And we're going to just really kind of just talk and open up in this hour. So, again, we want to hear from the sponsors before we get started. Tonight's show is brought to you by Liquid Effects Photography, Block Band Music, Bandhead.org, Universal Credit Sources, and Big Deal Fundraising. So let's take the time to hear from them now. What if there was a Facebook for bands? Wait a minute, there is. Bandhead.org. Bandhead.org is a social network for HBCU show bands. You can create your own profile and post videos, photos, and comments on Bandhead.org. Need somewhere to post events, audition schedules, job postings? Check out Bandhead.org. Are you recruiting for talent? Go to Bandhead.org. And coming this fall, HBCUbands.com. Write that down, HBCUbands.com. Attention high school directors and alumni. Does your band need to raise money to travel, buy instruments or uniforms? Are you looking to raise money to help your band? Well, Big Deal Fundraising is rapidly becoming one of the largest distributors of fundraising products in the industry. Big Deal is based in New York City and ships anywhere in the United States. Offering quality products, fast delivery, and innovative consultation that will help you meet your fundraising goals. Call today at 855-244-4430 or visit us at BigDealFundraisingUSA.com. Big Deal Fundraising, your fundraising partner for your band or music ensemble. 
Is your credit score keeping you from buying a home, a car, starting a business, or getting a job? Is your score keeping you from living the life you want? Well, look no further than Universal Credit Sources. UCS can help with charge-offs, collections, late payments, bankruptcy, foreclosure, debt settlement, tax liens, and more. Our program is affordable with results in as little as 40 days. Call now for your free 10-minute consultation with Senior Credit Analyst and Loan Officer Angie B. Call her direct line at 469-362-9904. That's 469-362-9904. Or check out the website at UniversalCreditSources.com. Universal Credit Sources for anything that's hurting your credit score. Are you thinking of tying the knot, having a party, or celebrating that special time in your life? To capture these special moments, call Liquid Effects Photography and take advantage of our 10 years of quality and experience. Liquid Effects Photography covers most of the Midwestern U.S. and will travel even farther on request. Call us at 773-454-5556. That's 773-454-5556. Or check out our website, liquideffects.com. That's L-I-Q-U-I-D-E-F-F-E-X.com. Come experience the uniqueness of Liquid Effects Photography. Block Band is a minority-owned music business that you can think of as your assistant band director. We help grow your musicians with a great selection of traditional concert band music. Then we back up their performance with necessities like reeds, oil, drum heads, drumsticks, and mallets. Finally, we outfit your players in auxiliary and shoes, spats, and gloves that match our precise custom drills. Got band? If so, then Block Band's got you. Check blockbandmusic.com or call us at 919-698-2560. That's blockbandmusic.com, 919-698-2560. Okay, we're back live, and we appreciate hearing from our sponsors. We've got a couple calls. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in Rashad and Troy. What's going on today, Rashad? Hey, man, everything is, is fantastic there, brother. Uh, man, I'm so sorry to hear about your loss there, man. Um, yeah, man, which, it happened which, really fast. Was she ill? Was she unexpected? Uh, oh no, she had uh, Alzheimer's for a while now. So uh, oh. yeah, it was kind of yeah. So it was kind of happened, but she lived a long life, you know. And um, my dad, I think it's I think it's six or seven of them, and um, they've mm-hmm. all been together. So everything has been cool. So yeah, man, looks like I'll be heading down to Jacktown pretty soon. It looks like we got, we got Troy on the line too. Is that you, Troy? Yes, sir. How you doing, Joe? What's going on, CB? Nothing much. Uh, my condolences as well, bro. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. So I'm glad that y'all called in on the show. I want to bounce a couple things off of y'all before we get into the content of the show, and we could just go ahead and get into uh, the uh, upcoming band season. Um, Troy, what what is your uh, most upcoming matchups that you're looking for this year? Um. I have to say, as always, I'm always looking forward to the Jackson Southern game. Uh, this right. year, a little more than, than normal because, uh, you know, this is Dallas Taylor's second year. You know, last year was a building year. The numbers were kind of small, you know what I'm saying? So this year I'm expecting the boom to really come with it, you know. So I'm right. I'm looking forward to that one a lot. I'm also looking forward to a lot of those smaller bands because I think uh, this year bands like uh, Livingstone, uh because, you know, last year they kind of got put on the map. And now it's like, okay, this year is going to be going to determine whether or not those bands are really here or if it was a fluke. Right, right. I, I, I actually was about to say the exact same thing, like the Living Stones and like Miles and yeah. all like our sleeper bands. I was wondering if yep. they were going to be able to return. What about you, Rashad? What you looking for this uh, this upcoming season? Well, I really enjoyed the fifth quarter battle and also the halftime show between Tennessee State and Bethune. So I'm not sure if they're matching up again, but if they if they are, man, that's that would be a, a heck of a battle. Um, but I really just am interested to see uh, anybody that A and T plays this year. <clears throat> I think A and T really uh, impressed a lot of people. You know, they've been a solid band for several years, but I think they really impressed a lot of people with their show this past season. The shows and also behind the battle of bands. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people say that they want it. I wasn't one of those. But, you know, as far as entertainment value was concerned, yeah, I would definitely agree they had the very best show. And so a lot of people are going to be – it's going to be really interesting to see what they do this coming year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm looking forward to A&T, like you said, maybe, and um, 
A and T and I'm trying to say definitely a Bethune. You know, I mean, you know, just because Bethune is doing well, I want to see Elizabeth City. If Elizabeth City can return, do you guys know? I did not see this last year, and I didn't see it this year either. But Elizabeth City and Livingstone don't play each other. What's up? Do y'all know what's up with that? I, do I don't not. know, but I know the CIAA is pretty. You know, it's relatively big. You know, so I don't think maybe they don't get a chance to play all the schools all the time. Okay, okay. So probably they may meet up in a championship because that would definitely be a good, a really good battle, you know, um, yeah. for, from seeing those two last year. Yeah, as a as a side note, also I'm online right now at Tennessee State. Their first game is against the Dome Cookman on September 1st in Nashville. Their oh, first man. game. There we go. <laughs> so we, yes, they sir. open up the season with a bang. That's nice. Yeah, that is. Our fans are practicing right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, they need to because their first three games is Bethune Cookman, FAMU, and Jackson State. So, good Lord. Good God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that's unbelievable <laughs> from a recruiting standpoint. Like, I mean, you, you they could go out and say, "Hey, these are our first three games." I mean, they gonna have to come with it to tell the truth. Yeah. 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 I, I, you I, have I have to have some. They're gonna have to have summer band camp during the summer. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean during June. <laughs> That's something, man. Well, uh, I want to um, talk about some of the things on the show. You guys are, you know, free to stay on there, and um, you know, uh, if you if you have to go, you know, I can just uh, be on the show. Um, you know, you guys have been on the show. We're gonna have Troy, Troy was um, one of the panelists when we did the the awards. And then Rashad is going to be um, also uh, one of the people doing the pronalysis this year. We look forward to that this upcoming fall because that's going to – One of the people. You got some other people doing pronalysis? Oh, man. Well, 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 <laughs> well I guess <laughs> – It's copyrighted, man. Hold people. up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I guess one of the people on the show, um, I'm, I'm just looking forward to it because at least, you know, we're going to have uh, – a uh, good expertise to bounce some things off uh, as this show grows. So, as far as the sponsorships um, that we heard in this last commercial, um, the sponsors help to improve the show and build a scholarship fund to allow us to broadcast during these peak hours. Um, so, uh, we want to say thanks to all of them. Rashad is a sponsor uh, for Block Band Music. We just heard his commercial. So, we want to thank um, all of those people and, uh, and essentially that are doing things um, at this small level, you know, we're on the ground level now, but, you know, we have faith that we'll be able to provide jobs and provide a quality of life for people, enhancing the economy. So um, we're looking forward to fill uh, positions and slots and hope to provide internship credit for college students and um, to give them experience, provide paying jobs in the future. Uh, but I want to say thanks to all the people that are working um, for the purpose, our sponsors, um, our editors, all the people that are doing the side things. If you're interested in helping out and getting in on the ground floor, we have some slots to fill. Just contact the show for details. I'll brush over a couple of the positions as it pertains uh, to our future plans. And sticking with sponsorship. You can sponsor the show, and we'll play your commercial on the air during our broadcast. Sponsorship is open to the network, um, or if you want to spe- if you want to sponsor a specific show, um, that's just fine. Just contact the show, and we'll set up the appointment. We'll handle all the business currently through PayPal. So if you have a PayPal account, it's the easiest and safest way for us to transact finances. Sponsorship is creating a commercial for your business, posting your business info on our blog, and using social media to plug your business and events, and uh, opening uh, our own apparel store, which I'll get into uh, um, get into shortly. So just contact the show for details. Again, that number is 718-664-6025. This is the 90 Degree Show brought to you by the Marching Podcast and Blog Talk Radio. Thanks for listening. Um I'll bounce a couple of things off you guys because you guys have been on the couple of shows. I was going to then get into uh, some of, like, the memories or some of the things that, like, I remember from this past year. Uh, Rashad, what would you say is something that you remember uh, from one of the broadcasts um, in this past year? <laughs> uh, I remember the very first broadcast that I was on 
where, you know, uh, you invited me to come to the show, and I was excited, you know, to do it and uh, do the analysis based on the um, behind the battle of the bands. And so, uh, you know, we got started, and, uh, you know, for about 10 minutes, I think I kind of, you know, joked around and had some fun there. And then I was like, hey, man, I need to get some gas real quick. <laughs> and so uh, it took me about, like, 10 minutes to get some gas and to fill up, you know. And then I came back. And, uh, you know, I sent, like, about 30 seconds worth of something. And then something, and you took a call, um, and we said about two minutes. And then you said, okay, well, you started playing the music, and you said, oh, okay, well, that's it. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> God, I thought it was an hour show, man, and I was like, oh, man, okay. I didn't. I would have, you know, I would have just would have stopped and ran, out, ran out of gas if I had known that. It was only thirty minutes. <laughs> I remember Hilarious. that. I remember that you was like, "Yeah, it's just gonna be," because I was like, "Yeah, it's just a thirty-minute show," and then it got back on quick. I think you called back in with maybe like ten minutes left, and mm-hmm. uh, like it was towards the end. So yeah, I remember that. That's actually pretty cool. <laughs> what, what about you, CB? My my biggest memory uh, from this past season um, had to be when we were talking. It was uh, myself, you and Maurice Bailey, and we got a lot of calls that day. We had quite a few calls, and we were talking about moving that Alcorn game to Alcorn. Yeah. And after that was going to result, that was a good show. I enjoyed that. You know, anytime you get to talk with Maurice Bailey, you know how animated and, and passionate about this that he is. So, you know, it was a, a heated a heated debate going on on that show, and I really enjoyed that, you know. Uh, it actually, yeah. but. Go I'm sorry. Go ahead, CB. Go ahead. Yeah, but uh, just the, the callers, you know, getting people that were calling in. We had a few older callers, you know, that went to Alcorn in, in the 70s. You know, it was just good. You know, I, just interacting with people that you don't see every day. You know, I, it, it was a, a great experience, you know, and I'm, I can't wait for this season to come up. Yeah, that's that's the best thing that I like so far is, you know, even meeting Rashad, you know, and just – like connecting with folks. I was going to say what's like my biggest experience this year was just connecting with folks and uh, like just now having like uh, people in other parts of the country that are, you know, going in the same field and have the same passions. And, uh, and, and that, and that show you talking about Troy actually rolled over to our emails. That was the most outside interaction of all the shows we had too. Cause like a couple people were emailing the show and like leaving long emails, like dissertations, you know, breaking right. down their point, and you know they just didn't want to call in, you know, for whatever reason. But but definitely, right. and then of course I had to go back and forth through email with a couple of the people, and uh, and then of course like two of them knew Maurice, so then of course they were just really <laughs> going in because it was Maurice, and they were from all corner, you know. So yeah. uh. Yeah, well, we yeah we were just hoping that more Alcorn folks would call in because you know I'm sure that we are gonna probably say something ignorant about Alcorn this year. It's just it's just how it is, you know. So hopefully we'll yeah. So hopefully they'll call. <laughs> hopefully some of those Alcorn folks will call in seven one eight six six four six zero two five. It's a ninety degree show, brought to you by Blog Talk Radio, the Marching Podcast. Thanks for listening. Um, other than the experiences, uh, meeting people. Um, going to the high school battle of the bands here in LA and having my first press pass, that was cool. And then sitting in the press seats, you know, with the camera, that that was cool. And then meeting Tamar Jones, a Spelman graduate who runs the event, um, that was really special to me because out here in California, you know, we don't have that same historically black college representation out here, and mm-hmm. and and you know, it's really important to try to to build it up because, you know, I met some of the directors there at, you know, at this event and they were saying, this is the premier like show style marching competition um, here in LA. Like, you know, it's, or I mean in the entire state. So they don't have this in Oakland or they don't have this anywhere else. And it was just all right. Like, and I'm not, and I'm not dogging the schools, but they just, they don't they don't have fam around the corner so they don't really know you know what i'm saying like like what to yeah. do so there was mm-hmm. a school and this is how i actually met um Carrie and Cox who's our uh percussion expert um but 
the school from Tallahassee, uh, I guess J- James S. Rickards, they came in and, and blew it out. Like it was no question. And everybody was like out there with the eyes open. They were like, wow, what is this? Like what is going on? Like the California high schools, were had, they had all these props. They had kids doing like cartwheels. And they had all this <laughs> extracurricular stuff going on other than the actual sticking or drum competition. So when you saw it, especially coming from what we know, it was like, wow, like they need some help out here, you know, but that's all that they have to represent. So just being there and hopefully to help out, you know, that that was important. And then even talking to uh, Christine Katzman, Stuart Pompeo, and Tim Hinton uh, representing a Halftime Mag, Pacific Crest, and the Marching Roundtable, respectively, um, they were very supportive with my interviews and willing willing to help me out. And uh, you know, they're not from any HBCUs, and and I thought that was important to give them props because I have c- encountered a lot more of um, a lot more resistance than what I expected as far as just trying to talk and get interviews with with people not really representing DCI, but they feel that this show style marching thing is like a cancer. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sure that you guys mm-hmm. know exactly what I'm what I'm talking about, but uh I those do. three people those three people were very supportive and they were cool um about it. And I mean they didn't even blink to say, Oh yeah, I definitely would help out. The guy, uh Stuart Pompeo actually sat down and like gave me a list of things to like do and to look out for. So um they were very, very you know, very, very supportive. So I have to give props to them because, you know, it was it was almost to the point where it was like pissing me off. Like where some of these people are just like blatant. You know, I just uh one director from a high school in Massachusetts, um, you know, wanted to talk to the representation of his people and it was automatically like, Well, you know, this is not the marching band that you're accustomed to, right? You understand that, you know, and it was like, Well, I'm just trying to how this guy's doing, you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to, you know, give him some props, get his name, get his school out there, but you know, they didn't want to do that. So, uh Yeah, man. I, I really uh I'm glad that you kind of brought that up because that really kind of ticks me off a lot. You know, um I think there is a good relationship. I think there's a healthy respect that show style bands have in general for for what the drum review of course do. You know, I mean, of course, there are those of us who say, oh, what are they doing? That's kind of boring. But I think a lot of us look at that and say, wow, you know, that's they're really good and they're really precise and they're working hard towards their art form. And we really respect what they do. But it's so often, like, you see videos on, on YouTube, you know, with somebody's drum line is playing something. It's like, oh, that was the worst drum line I've ever heard of in my life and blah, blah, blah. It's like it's just so much hate. And, you know, yeah, to say yeah. that they may not, weren't the cleanest drum line in the world, okay, that's fine. But there are plenty of uh, uh, core style bands and drum and bugle chords that sound, don't sound all that hot. And, you know, exactly. you click on their videos <laughs> and you don't see a bunch of hate, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I so um, I, I can understand what you went through there. Yeah, go ahead, I, Troy, because we have it, a caller and we're going to bring him in after Troy's statement. Go ahead, Troy. Okay. I think what it is a lot of times, it goes back to the thing that people, when you don't understand something – you automatically, you know, bash it, hate it, or, you know, are kind of scared of it. You know, I, mm-hmm. I worked with a guy that was a, he worked, he marched with Phantom Regiment for a few years, and then he was working with Regiment, and I think the Blue Devils. And, you know, I would show him some clips, and, you know, he's like, what is that? What is that? And I'm just like, you know, it's different, but that doesn't mean it's not as good as what you're doing. It's just, mm-hmm. like, you know, so. Exactly. We got a caller from the uh, 240 area code. Caller, give us your name, and uh, go ahead and express yourself this evening. Hello, caller from the 240 area code. Are you there? Man, that's the Phantom Resident right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, if you can hear us, man, just try to call us back. Um, I know that, you know, I'm just, that, that just happens sometimes, but try to call us back and hopefully we can bring you in. Uh, but we appreciate the call. 718 664 6025. It's a 90 degree show brought to you by the Marcher Podcast and Blog Talk Radio. Thanks for listening. Uh, but I'm glad that you guys had an opinion about it because definitely, you know, it's just like you said, it's, you know, people fearing, you know, what they don't know. And, it, and it's really unfortunate 
because they're cutting all music in all schools. You know what I mean? Like it's, you know, to be ignorant about one part of something is it's affecting us all. So, you know, there and there, and there are more people that can can get into bands or get into music. Um, I actually just tweeted out. I think this week, uh, one of my frat brothers found a clip of Ricky Smiley. Uh, doing the interpretation of like when he goes to a football game at Bama and he sees the halftime show versus when he mm-hmm. goes to an HBU and talks about the halftime show. And it's just the difference of excitement. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's just, I wish uh, it was more of that. But props to Christine, uh, Kiss, I'm sorry, Christine Katzman uh, from Halftime Max, Stuart Pompel from uh, Pacific Crest, and Tim Hinton of the Marching Roundtable. Still listen to the Marching Roundtable. These are the only two podcasts, as far as the marching arts are concerned, that are out there now. So uh, props out to him. They do more of the DCI and uh, knew more of the conversations with directors um, of whatnot. So um, it's a good show, all of them. So really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, it was just that ignorance in martial arts is just affecting this uh, affects us all um, as far as how it is. So, um, getting into some of the things that uh, we've accomplished, I'm just gonna run through those right quick because we're at the the 30 minute mark. Um, let's see here. The uh, one thing I guess I was most proud of it took six months to do is that I filed for a trademark. And we're officially a trademark organization now. You can check it out at Trademarkia. That's T R A D E M A R K I A dot com uh, slash the Marching Podcast, and uh, you'll see the official logo, like the, the, the headphones, uh, the dude with the goatee. Um, that's now in the official books. Um, it was good to see um, the. It was good to see the paper out here. You have to – it actually posts in your in your regional paper the establishment of the businesses in the area. So it was cool to see that in the San Bernardino Sun and the Redlands Daily Facts. Um, and also something I wanted to get into, establishing the uh, the um, apparel store. We have Marching Podcast Nelia. Just go to 436050.spreadshirt.com. Uh, we have some nice things to buy. Um, we're looking for someone to run the store for us, and we have uh, we're looking for someone who has experience in retail, um, or someone who has experience, uh, or someone who's looking to have experience in retail. Um, we want to enhance your experiences, so contact the show for details. Proceeds from the show go to uh, uh, go to improve the show and build our scholarship fund. And taking sponsorship, we have a deal where we can open the apparel store for your business as well. And not only can we pub what you're doing through the podcast, but uh, we're also allowing uh, the people who partnership with us through sponsorship that they will get 100% of their proceeds. That is right, 100% of the money that you guys make through the uh, apparel store that you open through partnership with us. We will, You will take 100% of the proceeds to your business. Um, that's a new thing that we worked out, and we're excited to put that on out there in the air to all the people. So, yes, uh, part of the sponsorship deals is opening up the apparel store in your name for your business, and 100% of the proceeds will go to you and your business. Uh, so uh, just contact the show for details. Um, we're really excited about that. But also, indeed, we need someone to actually run the retail store. Um, I don't have any experience in retail and um, just trying to do my best with all the other things with the the business and the the podcast. We need someone to actually run those stores. Um, So just contact the uh, show for details if you have experience or looking to gain experience in that area. 718-664-6025. This is the 90 Degree Show brought to you by the Marching Podcast and Blog Talk Radio. Thanks for listening. Uh, Troy, I'm just going to bounce a couple of things off of you um, uh, about um, uh, last year and um, right fast about um, some of the things that some of the awards that we had. Um, just get here to the things I was going to ask you. Um, in the the uh, in the last conference thing, you picked the SWAC. Um, for like the best overall conference, do you think the SWAC will continue that this year, or do you think that the MIAC is coming for? Them? Uh, 
Lots of big size. I think the swag. I think the swag is gonna continue, but I think the margin is getting smaller. And mm-hmm. you know that's gonna uh, a big factor is gonna be you know what's gonna happen with fam. You want to come in years? Uh, because I think one of the best things for the MEAC, I, I, I don't want people to take this the wrong way, was fam, you get that suspension because a lot of kids were diverted to other schools and mm-hmm. it, you know, made a lot of those other programs better. You know, Bethune Cooking was already a, a dynamite program, but I don't think anybody can doubt that when fam, you lost their program, that Bethune Cookman even took a greater step. You know, they got more kids and a higher caliber of kids down there. And I think that happened to a lot of the MEAC schools, not not as many SWAC schools. But I, I think the SWAC is still going to remain a premier conference for HBCU bands, but I think that margin is getting slimmer. You know, some of the, some of the schools in the SWAC that we have got to step their game up. I'm talking about the Valleys, you know, schools like that got to, you know, get right. Right. What What do you think, Rashad? Um, yeah, I, I still think the SWAC, for the moment, will still continue to uh, to be the better conference overall. Um, it, it's just a difference, and it's, it's kind of like with the SWAC, you can get cut on any weekend. I mean, that's just I don't care who you are, you can get cut on any weekend because all the bands are pretty good. You know, there's some bands that are great, but I don't think there's any bands that are that are not so good, you know, like every single one of them is like, could could, could catch you slipping. In the MEAC, it's not really so much like that. It's like you can, you probably get about half the bands that are like, wow. Now, they are monsters. The great bands in the MEAC are monsters. But the mm-hmm. ones that are not so great are not, are not really monsters. You know, and so a lot of that is regional, I think, because a lot of the bands in the MEAC don't see each other that much because of how spread out that they are. So they never yeah. develop rivalry, that type of competition that they have in the SWAC. One, if that starts to happen, if more schools enter the MEAC or if they start to have more competition and more rivalry, then eventually, you know, the MEAC will get to that point where it's just any weekend you can get destroyed. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I was definitely thinking about the geography of the situation myself. You know, definitely, you know, the, the SWAC is, I actually put the MEAC last year um, just because I was impressed with some of the bands that I had I hadn't seen before, but but definitely yeah it's definitely the same it's 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 the numbers and the size of those swag bands man it's just hard to compete with and definitely you know I don't know how often you know those schools in Virginia get down to Florida or get down to South Carolina for a lot of those games um, I mean we really even didn't do it ourselves like I don't think. Troy and I ever went to Prairie View. You no, know, I was go, just thinking <clears throat> Prairie View, and they and they don't come yeah. to Jackson. No, and and we only went at the, and we went to Texas Southern our crab year. year. Yeah, but we didn't go back our junior year. So you know it was, you know the we we definitely had enough in our regionals. You know people close enough to us. So definitely, I I think that. uh it would just be nice, like you said, Troy. I think it was a good point about fam not being there, but it, it would be nice to see some of those bands come up, like more of your Savannah States or, uh, you know, more of some of those other bands to kind of surprise you. Because definitely, you're right, you know, you could get cut on any weekend. You just never know. But, you know, you, you may not fear, I don't know, I hate to say Howard or something, but, I mean, I'm not trying to dog Howard, but, you, I mean, you know what I mean. Yeah, we you know are. What I'm saying. Yeah, we are. <laughs> right, right. What would, Set. what would be an awesome answer to that? I, don't, I know this would have never happen, but if Tennessee State, for example, were to join the MEAC, that would change everything. Because then Tennessee State would then have the opportunity to see those more northern bands. And Tennessee State is a great band. If you see Tennessee yeah. State enough, I think you're going to turn into a whole different type of band. I mean, look at Middle Tennessee State out of Tennessee. You know, um, they're a core style band, but, you know, I haven't seen them a lot, but a, a little bit that I've seen, I know they're pretty funky. And I think I think that's because they come against Tennessee State every year. And you're like, man, you get tired of somebody stealing your crowd. Right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right. If that were to ever happen, you know, and, of course, you've got A&T and Tennessee State running into each other, you know, North Carolina Central, I mean, all those bands, Ad- adding that additional powerhouse up towards the north would just completely change the MEAC. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think so. It, it yeah, I, I I just hate the Tennessee State in in a conference too. Like you know that you know that they're playing, and I guess you know they're doing what they do for whatever reason, and it's been like that for a while. But yeah, I really hate the Tennessee State is not in a conference. But the, I don't think they would join the SWAC. I, I just don't. I don't think that would happen. Um, no. another. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, the height was not being in the conference. Some of the first three games at Jackson, Bethune, and and Bam. Yeah, and maybe that's why they do it, just so they can play those, because those are gonna be good football ga- matchups too. I mean, those are some right. story programs. I mean, they're gonna sell a lot of tickets. So and they're money they, exactly. They're money makers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So. Um, I want to get into another accomplishment, um, and that's the addition of other shows to the network. You know, we're talking marching band now, and that's how, that's where this started all. But we're also opening up the marching podcast to um, to open and host other shows. Um, we welcome Irene Viscara uh, to the marching podcast, and she's off and running with her show, Medicina. That comes on the first Monday of every month at 6.30 Pacific time here on the Marching Podcast. Spanish for medicine um, is medicina, and that is what and that is which heals, nurtures, and renews. The show explores the ways in which we can be healed and nurtured and renewed by love through self-development, self-love, and service. The show is for anyone and everyone looking to live life fuller, jo- joyful lives of purpose. Listen to her uh, the first Monday of every month at 6.30 Pacific time. Uh, we also have Marlon Griffith, another proud uh, Hamptonian uh, here with Rashad here. He's joining the Marching Podcast family with Bam Bam's Boot Camp, um, and that, that'll be our health podcast will be coming this year. Uh, Marlon, or Bam, as he's known to a lot of people in Hampton, um, is an official registered personal trainer, and that's going to add some validity to his podcast. So we're excited about bringing him into the fold, and all of his information right now is TBA. And uh, Hanif Satterfield and Minding Our Own, Minding Our Business, um, the owner and founder of the Bob Spotter, that's black-owned business spotter, um, we're working with him to put out a business podcast supporting the Bob Spotter and making people aware of the uh, black owned businesses in your in your in your region in your area. Hanif has actually been doing his thing in entertainment for a while. He was the founder of Untamed TV and works on the Funky Fresh Funky Fresh Fishing Show uh with another one of my frat brothers Anthony Taylor. Shout out to you guys. And I believe that he's trying to build a studio. Um so um, that's in the works. Um, so we actually got some things working with that. We're excited about that. So just contact the show for details. But if you're interested in hosting your own podcast here through the Marching Podcast, um, just contact the show and um, we'll get everything up and running. You'll be using this platform here. And uh, it's the more economical option. Um, uh, Blog Talk Radio, um, everything can be uh, in your subscription, but we will uh, cut off and make everything a little bit cheaper, but and also control some of the things in the background. I I'm doing like four or five jobs when I host this podcast, just because I'm doing it by myself. But anyone who wants to run their own podcast, I'll do everything in the background, and you can just contact uh, or just concentrate on your content. So we look forward to that, too, to just broaden our listenership and exp- expand the programming here in the Marching Podcast in the future. So we're excited about that as well. Um, last thing I wanted to say as far as our accomplishments, um, we have a total of 61 total podcast shows that we have put out here since uh, a year from today at 61 total shows, and we have a total of 17,406 total hits out of the difference of those shows. Uh, We feel pretty good about that number. The most downloaded podcasts have been the Chopping It Up series um, because it's interviews, and I believe the interviews can reach more people. We project bigger numbers this year for the 90 Degree Show because of the new format and with Rashad, the new analysis. So we're thankful for those numbers, and uh, we look forward to the upcoming football season to expand in this show. And we hope that, and we think that we're going to project that the things are going to double for the 90 Degree Show just based on um, the Prunalysis. Prunalysis is. Uh, 
Rashad, I guess you could talk about that a little bit um, before we get into the last block of the sponsorship. When did you start doing the prunalysis? Well, I, I guess I better hurry up and start talking about it because it seems like you are going to give it to somebody else. When, uh, <laughs> when, uh, I'm one of the people doing the pronouncing. Hold up. <laughs> you found you, you found the secret. The, the triple in your numbers to have multiple people do the pronouncing. <laughs> pronouncing. <laughs> Man, uh, I guess that was back in, uh, in 2001, maybe, when I first graduated. Uh, I graduated in 2000, and then so – I guess it was 2000 I started doing that. Um, probably the first game that I remember going to the 2000 season was Bowie State uh, versus Winston-Salem State. You know, and I just jotted down some ideas of some of the things um, that I heard. And um, and then after that, I think the next one was uh, Hampton and, and Winston-Salem. And I began to quickly realize that, you know, based on people's opinions, what they were saying at the game, the people in the band, that they didn't have a true understanding of what really happened. You know, when you're in the band, when I was in the band, I always thought that we were great when I played every note right because, I, I mean, I played every note right, you know. So I always felt like, we, oh, man, we were awesome. But when you stand uh, when you stand on the other side of your horn, that's when you realize what's really going on. And so I kind of took it as a personal mission to begin to really become detailed about every single thing that I heard, not just who had the better song, but, Whose, whose hat fell off, who was out of line, how great somebody was, everything. And I just tried to leave it unbiased, but still be kind of sarcastic about it at some point and allow you to put, try to put you there in the seat and allow you to make the best the decision as far as which band was the best. Yeah, man, and that's on point because, you know, that's what we're really trying to do here. I'm really trying to put myself at some of these games because I'm so far out here. And um, I think it'll be really cool for the show. We'll probably pick a game that we want to talk about, and what, whatever you feel like you're going to do the prunalysis on, that's what we'll roll with. It doesn't have to be the feature game. Um, we just want to just cover as much band information as possible on that Sunday. So we're really excited about hearing it. You know, you, it's it's really detailed. You know, if you guys go to the fifth quarter, it's the fifth quarter is forum dot the fifth quarter dot um, and and T the number five T H. Okay, that that caller from the two four zero. Oh, he called and then he hung up again. We I was about to try to bring him in. Um, he tried yeah, to bring him in. again, boy. Yeah, <laughs> man. He, but yeah, man. If you out there, man, I definitely try to get you on. But um, but definitely we um we're gonna try to do that. Introduce more two four zero. That makes me think East Coast or something. That makes me think of the eight to five guys. I know that they are going to, you know, do their thing this year with taping the bands. So we'll then also uh, highlight whatever um, band, whoever, whoever videoed the um, the analysis that we watched for that week. We'll give props to that company. We'll give props to those people. So the eight to five guys. I know I told Tyrone, you know, he could call in today because wanted to get maybe some of his insight about. Uh, what some of the games they were going to be going to this year. We have another call in from the 301 area code. Um, Caller, go ahead, state your name and express yourself this evening. Hi, um, my name is Tyrone McCollum. Oh, from <laughs> what, what's, up, man? <laughs> what's going on, man? I was just talking about you, man. How you doing, man? Not much, man. I'm I'm blessed, man. I'm happy to get a chance to get in here and talk to you. To you guys. Yeah, man. Um, we appreciate it, man. And that—that that was you no calling problem. from two four zero too, wasn't it? Because I'm looking at your number right here now. Yeah. Uh, ah. For some reason, it wasn't going through. I don't know what was going on, but I'm here now. <laughs> well, that's what's up, man. I appreciate the call, man. So, so let's let's go ahead. Um, I'm gonna hold you on, and I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna play the sponsors one last time. So I want to get your thoughts and, like, the, the questions that we answered uh, with Troy and Rashad. I'm going to go ahead and get your take, Tyrone, about a couple of things. But let's go ahead and take the time to hear from our sponsors for the last block of the show. Okay. Is your credit score keeping you from buying a home, a car, starting a business, or getting a job? Is your score keeping you from living the life you want? Well, look no further than Universal Credit Sources. 
UCS can help with charge-offs, collections, late payments, bankruptcy, foreclosure, debt settlement, tax liens, and more. Our program is affordable with results in as little as 40 days. Call now for your free 10-minute consultation with Senior Credit Analyst and Loan Officer Angie B. Call her direct line at 469-362-9904. That's 469-362-9904. Or check out the website at UniversalCreditSources.com. Universal Credit Sources for anything that's hurting your credit score. Are you thinking of tying the knot, having a party, or celebrating that special time in your life? To capture these special moments, call Liquid Effects Photography and take advantage of our 10 years of quality and experience. Liquid Effects Photography covers most of the Midwestern U.S. and will travel even farther on request. Call us at 773-454-5556. That's 773-454-5556. Or check out our website, liquideffects.com. That's L-I-Q-U-I-D-E-F-F-E-X.com. Come experience the uniqueness of Liquid Effects Photography. What if there was a Facebook for bands? Wait a minute, there is. Bandhead.org. Bandhead.org is a social network for HBCU show bands. You can create your own profile and post videos, photos, and comments on Bandhead.org. Need somewhere to post events, audition schedules, job postings? Check out Bandhead.org. Are you recruiting for talent? Go to Bandhead.org. And coming this fall, HBCUBands.com. Write that down, HBCUBands.com. Blockband is a minority-owned music business that you can think of as your assistant band director. We help grow your musicians with a great selection of traditional concert band music. Then we back up their performance with necessities like reeds, oil, drum heads, drumsticks, and mallets. Finally, we outfit your players in auxiliary and shoes, spats, and gloves that match our precise custom drills. Got band? If so, then Block Band's got you. Check blockbandmusic.com or call us at 919-698-2560. That's blockbandmusic.com, 919-698-2560. Attention high school directors and alumni. Does your band need to raise money to travel, buy instruments, or uniforms? Are you looking to raise money to help your band? Well, Big Deal Fundraising is rapidly becoming one of the largest distributors of fundraising products in the industry. Big Deal is based in New York City and ships anywhere in the United States. Offering quality products, fast delivery, and innovative consultation that will help you meet your fundraising goals. Call today at 855-244-4430 or visit us at BigDealFundraisingUSA.com. Big Deal Fundraising, your fundraising partner for your band or music ensemble. All right, thanks again to our sponsors. Uh, Remember that you are free to uh, talk to the show about sponsoring the show, um, playing your business and pubbing your business here on our airwaves. Just contact the show for details. All right, Tyrone, so I want to ask you a couple of things, man, especially since you are um, a part of the video team that uh, we definitely like here at the Martian Podcast at 8 to 5 Entertainment. Um, what are some of the matchups you're looking forward to this upcoming football season? Um, over the past few years, we kind of kicked our season off with the MEAC Slack Challenge. Um on Labor Day weekend, so we're definitely looking forward to that game, seeing that it's going to be the first opportunity. Uh, hello? Uh, do I still have Troy and Rashad? You still got me. It's Troy. Okay. Uh, I don't know, maybe... Uh, Tyrone. Yeah, it may be something going on with Tyrone, but uh, definitely I know that. Uh... I'm here. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I thought I thought you got cut out or something, man. So, so the no, okay. No. So the so the Miac and Swag Challenge, um, that's gonna be exciting. Who who? So we choked. I remember we lost the swag last year. I'm not even going to get into that because I'm still pissed about that. We lost to Pine Bluff Ball people, I think. And uh, uh-huh. so it should probably be them. And who won the MEAC last year? Uh, I believe it was Norfolk. Okay. So it'll probably be Norfolk and Pine Bluff, you think, this year? That must no, be the first um, time ever Norfolk won it. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, it, they pretty much came out the blue, and it was a a 
really rough year for a lot of people going up against them because uh, matchup-wise, they really couldn't figure out how to go against them. Um, Howard was another one that just came out of the blue and started winning a whole bunch of games. <laughs> so, I mean, um, actually, this year, the MIAC SWAT Challenge, they're taking a, a totally different direction rather than going with the two winners of the conferences. They're just picking two new teams. Well, Florida A&M was in it um, back in 2007, I believe, against Southern. And this year they're bringing in Mississippi Valley State oh. as a new arrival to <laughs> me at SWAC. <laughs> wow. So, um, I believe on the fifth quarter somebody mentioned it to be the the snakes versus ugly Betty. I, I'm not sure where they got that <laughs> reference from, but it, it should be an interesting matchup now that the machine known as the Rattlers, the March 100, is pretty much starting over, going up against a, a unknown band, I guess. And not too many people have seen Mississippi Valley State. Yeah. So, um, I'm There's thinking that's going to be uh, yeah, a battle there. For those people. <laughs> wow. Um, and I hate I hate the doggy valley, but I mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know. I mean. Hey, it is what it is. But, yeah, it is. You know, hopefully, right. they, they'll definitely get something out of um, being on a big platform like that. The Midwest White Channel is being hosted on ESPN two. That's a I good think point. they're switching it over to ESPN U in the next couple of years, um, but definitely a big pack platform for them. Um, in addition to that, we're looking at the South Carolina State Alabama A and M game, which is in week three um, down in Orangeburg. That should be well, exciting. That's going to be an interesting matchup there, and actually. We've heard that Alabama now uh, will be coming to that oh, one. Um, we're looking to go to the Atlanta Classic this year, which they've kind of uh, reached out to two new schools, South Carolina State and North Carolina A&T, are going to bam it out down there in the Georgia Dome the last time they was were both in the Georgia Dome was back in 2002 um, in the Peach State Classic. So that's going to be a really big game there. Um, there's a whole bunch of others. Uh, we were looking at um, possibly going out to uh, the Circle City Classic, which you have uh, Grambling going against Alcorn. Um, oh wow! Okay. And uh, Bethune Cookman and South Carolina State are definitely going to tag, tangle up definitely. again down in Daytona. Um, definitely, yeah. We'll definitely be going to the, the Battle of Issues. Is something that uh, we've kind of taken on over the years since 2009 as a um, a battle that we took interest in. Highlighting two of the smaller schools in the MIAC going against each other. And it's a major rival in the MIAC. Yeah, it really is. So we'll definitely be supporting, like, wherever you guys go. I, I know that, you know, we'll be, you know, looking at the tape. So we'll probably be, you know, when you guys go to these games, you know, that'll be our our featured matchup. Um, you as the listener can always call in and voice your opinion about the matchups that you attended. Um, but definitely we'll be sticking with 8 to 5 with um, a lot of the performances, a lot of the videos that they're going to be putting out there. We're down to the end of the show. I really appreciate you guys calling in and helping me out with the show. Um, I wanted to say another thing that was really good for this past year is meeting all the people. And I touched about I touched on it earlier, um, but just meeting um, Rashad and just meeting you, Tyrone, it's been good. Um, and I definitely think that we're making a difference here um, in our um, in our in our uh, attempts and our passion to build what we know is you know 
show style marching and um you know, I knew Troy, that's my crab brother. He was the uh crab president of the nineteen ninety seven uh Trump stank crab class. So, you know, much props with Troy and you know so but but just meeting other people um, you know, one thing my cousin Ryan Beer told me, um, I'll probably be seeing him soon. Um, he was uh went to Provine High School there in Jackson, but I'll never forget he said to make sure that you put yourself around good people. And that's really, really important because, you know, you really want to surround yourself with people that are going in a good direction. And I think that that's something that I learned years ago and now doing this podcast and meeting people like our sponsors and meeting the the uh, the two of you guys it's been good because you know I think that we're going in a good direction so I really appreciate your help and appreciate um what you're doing wish, wish you all much success in your businesses and definitely glad that you know we at the Martian podcast can help you out um we're going to close the the phone phone lines down and I'm not going to take any more calls um, but um, <clears throat> I'll just say that my favorite show was probably the 2012 awards because it felt like a normal conversation and what I imagined this podcast to be uh, about bands and talking about the videos and notes and critique. Um, also liked about the marching pod, or I'm sorry, about the 90 degree show, the shows that I could voice my opinion about things. Um, I did a, a, a show on Hazen where I could talk about some things. I did a show about Marco McMillan, rest in peace, Marco, and about uh, the black community's interaction with homosexuality. So it was good to talk about that um, because it 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 does buffer with some of our issues in our community. So. One day I hope that, you know, it will be a more of an open dialogue on those shows where people can call in and give me points uh, of, of opinion to think about. Talking to Dow Taylor uh, was great himself. He was actually the first person to call in on that day of the show, and I talked to him for a second trying to recall. Um, I had, I think, music theory or something like that with him, and that class was kicking my behind so bad. Thank, thank the Lord, Dr. Taylor. He just let me out with a C. I appreciate that, brother. You know, I, hey, you know, what I'm saying it made a difference in my life because music ain't no joke, Rashad. Man, I, I give you much props for what you do and like your arrangers and writing all that music. Cause, I mean, that that ain't no joke, man. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I appreciate that and um, appreciate all the things and props to all the people that have music degrees. So, um, it's been great to talk to you guys, and I know that I'll be in contact with you. Um, throughout the year, especially this upcoming marching season, we'll get things going with that that first game, that Swag Miak Challenge. Uh, but we got two minutes left, Rashad. Uh, do you have anything out to sign out on the way out? Yeah, um, that show you said with the black community and homosexuality, what, didn't you have Tyrone as, as a, a feature guest on that show? Uh, no, no, no. It was... Uh, uh, no one no. called in, matter of fact. Like it was uh no one no one wanted to touch that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, so uh but no, Tyrone went on the show. <laughs> I don't I know, know Tyrone. About that. <laughs> no. oh. Uh but yeah, man, hey, man it was uh, it is such yeah. But go ahead, Rashad. You have anything to say on the way out? Yeah, man, we just want to appreciate what you do, man, and to give you credit for yeah. everything that you do. It's something that's well past the time, and so we appreciate you being the one to step forward and give all of us an opportunity to let us know about what's going on and to share your views and, and show style band with America. Okay, appreciate that, man. Troy, you got something on the way out? Nothing much. I'm looking forward to the upcoming season, and like Rashad says, you know, we want to thank you. You know, the visionary, we owe you, we owe, we owe you a great deal, so thanks a lot, Joe Beard. Appreciate that, CB. CB? 97. All right. Uh, anything to say on the way out, uh, Tyrone? Uh, man, like everyone said, we appreciate you, man, and congratulations on making it through your first year here, and much success to you in the coming years, man. Well, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, that's all the time we have for the show. Thank God for one year doing this, and I pray for many, many more. Hope to build that bridge from the West Coast to HBC. HBCU to enrich our community through education. Check out the website at www.themarshallpodcast.com and donate what's in your heart. 
Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Thanks to you for listening. And remember, the eye is a better pupil and more willing than the ear. Advice may be misleading, but examples are always clear. See you next time.